Today I'm going to walk you through the entire process of focusing a guide scope, how to get the camera situated correctly, how to get it in focus so you're getting the best possible guiding out of your equipment. There basically exists two ways to guide with a setup like this. Either you use what's called an off-axis guider where you place a camera all the way back here, but the most common way is to use what's called a guide scope. This is this little secondary scope sitting on the side, and we're going to be attaching a camera to that, and we're going to be using this to guide and this to image. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get this guide scope focused correctly, how to situate the camera, and how to get everything just spot on so you get the best possible guiding, because it is quite different than focusing a main scope. The first thing you want to do is you want to go in and remove any do shields or anything else you have that would interfere with this. And we're also going to remove the front cap so that is out of the way. Next, you need to figure out how to actually focus it. This may vary from scope to scope. So look at the manual, but from in my case here, I need to turn this front section here. And this is how you basically focus it by turning this and you can then lock it in place with this red ring here. So the first thing you do before you do anything else is just make sure however you focus it, that you turn that a little bit. You're just going to put it somewhere like that. And then I'm going to lock this in place with the uh, with the locking ring here. And I'm just doing that so that I have a bit of room to play so that I can focus both inside and outside depending on where I end up situating my camera. I'm going to be using this, which is a ZW ASI Air uh, 1200mm small monochrome camera. It's a very, very common guide camera, but any small camera will probably work just fine. So what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, make sure this is open here at the back, wherever you insert this. This again might vary from camera to also guide scope to guide scope. And we're then going to slide the, um, the, cam the, ca the guide camera in just like halfway to start. You don't have to be super accurate here because we're going to be adjusting this later. I'm then going to twist this to lock it in and I'm going to insert the cable there. Now, if you're running this off an ASI Air as I am here, then you're now good to go. If you're running it off a computer, make sure that cable, of course, connected to your computer. But now we're ready to go and power on our ASI Air and we can begin the focusing routine. Once we are connected, we are going to be jumping in here to the main camera setting, not the guide camera setting, because we're actually going to be setting up our guide camera as our main camera temporarily. Now, I don't have a main camera connected, so this is going to be quite easy, but I'm going to check my list here and I'm going to select Oh, hold on. I already have mine here over as a guide camera, so I'm going to, <laughs> to turn it off as a guide camera, go in here to the main camera, and now I can select it as a main camera, and I can turn that on. Good. So now we are connected to that as our main camera. We can now go to our preview, and let's just shoot a very quick test shot here. After a little bit of trial and error, I now found a place that was actually so bright out because of the sun that <laughs> everything was overexposed. So I had to go in here and lower my gain all the way down to zero and also set my exposure time to the lowest possible setting and then i had to find something in the shade in order to actually be able to uh, to not just overexpose the sensor completely but now we found something and everything is very very blurry but that's okay so now we're going to unlock the camera here actually what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to put this into video mode so now it's going to basically show us a live feed as you can see here if i move my hand and cross we can see that it now is going to show us a live feed from this camera so I'm going to release this lock here and I'm going to just slowly begin to pull the camera out, in and out, until you can see here, slowly we're getting in focus. And I'm going to try to get this as good in focus as I can. And this is going to be a little difficult because the cable here is a bit too short. Let's see if we can do this. You don't have to be like super accurate at this point, but get something that's decent like there that looks pretty good. I like that. I am going to lock that in place. You actually see the whole thing rotates here as we're locking the camera in. But that's fine. Now we have something that's decent. This is just a starting point. We're just going to get like the first initial um, uh, focus in now, and then we're going to fine tune it during the night. But it's a good idea to do this during the day and then do something, focus on something that's like as far away as you can, because it just means you have less adjustment you have to do when we go out and do this at night for the proper alignment, I should say. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to put my phone down here. I'm going to unlock our focuser here on the uh, on the guide scope. Like so. And now again, while looking at this live feed from the camera, I'm going to just begin to slowly fine tune it. And when you're fine tuning here, it can sometimes be a good idea 
try to go back. I like to do that sometimes, go back to the preview, shoot a quick shot here because this allows you now to zoom in and we can kind of look in and zoom in on the branches. They are overexposed, so, but we are a little bit out of focus. I'm going to try to see if I turn that a little bit, take a new shot, is that better or worse? So just that's just basically the whole process right now is just to try and get this as much in focus as you can. Okay, I think that is as much as I'm going to get it into focus right now. We don't have to be super accurate right now. As I said, we are going to do the final adjustment when it gets dark. So for now, I'm going to very carefully here lock this in place like so, so that my focus is now locked. I can reattach my heater band just for transport. There we go. Once it is dark, we can go ahead and we can go from the preview mode and go over to the focus mode. Here we can now select an area we want to, uh, to focus on. I suggest you don't try to focus on the brightest star you can see, but it should be kind of a medium-sized star. So not the faintest because that might be difficult to get enough accurate data on, but the brightest can get blown out and take up too much of an, of an area that can also be difficult to focus. So take something like a medium-sized star and you can basically select it with this green box. This gives you this interface here, where on the top you see the basically a measurement for how big the star is, is the full width half max of the star. And the lower one is the peak, so basically how bright the center of the star is. And as it also show here on the interface, you want the size of the star to be as small as possible, and you want the peak to be as high as possible. I usually just go for the size and just try to, to fine tune it, but sometimes if you're really trying to fine tune, Look at the, both of those values. And now we're going to go through the same process. You're not going to move the camera this time. The camera is locked in. This is where it is. But we're going to unlock the focusing ring again. And we're going to slowly try to focus the, um, the guide scope as well as we can. Now, you actually don't need to get this spot on. Often, it's actually beneficial to have a slight defocus on your guide scope because the guiding software is going to try to guide on the brightest spot in the star because it assumes that's the center. But if you are actually in pinpoint focus, that center point could actually be jittering all over the place and you're basically going to be guiding after that jitter. So by having a ever so slightly defocus on your star, means that that center point is actually going to be smoothed out a little bit more and you might actually see better guiding performance by being slightly out of focus. And one final thing, remember this channel is funded through the sale of my book, The Cosmic Field Guide. This is a ideal handbook for people that are interested in astrophotography. photography. It's intended for you to take out with you. It has a ton of useful graphs and tables. You can look up things and places where you can write down your own data um, and, and keep logs of what you're doing during the night. So awesome go check it out at deepspacebooks.com thanks for watching and clear skies this allowed me to get all the way down to around one arc second of total error which is really really good i mean we also now i'm going to put this up around my wi-fi antenna